Well, my pockets are feeling like about time we went on a tear. Fine haul there. <laughs> yeah. Mister? Mama said there ain't enough cattle for us to sell them this year. Gonna have to store up on tack for the winter. Hey, folks. Hey, partner. Oh, hello. Welcome. Don't dawdle. Get what you need, and go. I ain't gonna stay patient forever. Get down to business. Well, buy it or don't. I got things to tend to, so get on with it. She posed as a paid woman, took men up, sliced them up and into ribbons. <laughs> Happy to say that those types of women have nothing to do with this establishment. <laughs> yes, sir. What's it to be? Tell you, I can't stand some of the little lives come in here. Could have killed that fella shoving him like that. Yes, there ain't much point complaining how your blood's buttered if you're getting bread at all. Just down. Here we go. Damn annoying ladies, all you. You ain't men. I have a whiskey. No, I fought 50 engines. Always worth you having one, one for the road. If a bear comes in your yard, a bear comes in my yard, I eat him. I ate an engine once. Once ate a priest as well. Said I was a heathen, so I showed him how much heathen I was. Grill the old bastard Don't right you just where the up a girl's stockyards bed. are now. You have an itch yeah. need scratching?
You ain't men. None of you. Hey there, pal. Can you help me? Could you use some help finding my way home? I can't make heads or tails of where I'm at. <laughs> I live in front of the saloon next to the freight station. You know if I'm heading in the right direction? Sure, sure. Just head over that way. You'll get home fine. Thank you, mister. Certainly do appreciate it. Certainly do. Always something going on around here. Hey, mister. You left me with one foot in the grave, but if you try that again, I'll show you what it means to cross a Callaway. You just get what you need and don't linger too long, all right? Well, let's see what you got. Me, mister. I'm still here. Oh. Mister? Well, you can go ahead and sleep it off. You're telling me. Howdy, friend. Okay, there. What now? What'll it be, then? Give me something to drink, anything. Here's a beer. You looking for a repeat? Hey. Wouldn't believe it unless I'd seen it. Hello. Yeah, welcome. What is it you want from here? So, you decide on that? There, come on. Relax, my friend. Never mind. I don't want things to get out of hand, all right? So long. Thank you. 
Gentlemen. Howdy. Good well, howdy. Hey, partner. How do you do? <laughs> oh, come on. Thanks, mister. Welcome. In the mood for a show? Can I buy a ticket, please? We'll be starting soon, just inside the tent there. One of the wonders of the age. In fact, one of the wonders of age. 
any age. Aerial navigation, or as we call it, man flight. Soaring through the heavens in flying machines so that even gravity itself can be mastered. An amazing and bewildering spectacle. But I assure you, everything I am about to share with you is true. Now, we are all familiar with the potential cruelties and injustices of travel by horse, wagon, or locomotive. You are like to be beset upon by the infinite savagery of wicked men or bloodthirsty beasts that lurk in the bogs and plains of these tormented lands. But what if I told you, for a certainty, that man will soon be traveling across the heavens with wings like a bird? I am sure you think I am full of untruth, but I have not drank a pint of liquor in over a year, and I will do my utmost to demonstrate the veracity of my claims. For a hundred years, steamboats have engaged in passage along our great rivers, but a man by the name of Cecil H. Peck is in the process of inventing a steamboat for the sky. The only limitation on its speed at which the porter can shovel on more coal. But parts of the country where coal is scarce, oars can be used in the skies to hasten your voyage and keep the passengers active while they travel. Near Pittsburgh, there lives a telegraph man named Aldous Kinnear, who each evening after supper retires to his barn and dons the wings of a giant creature and takes to the heavens. You will be delighted to know he has traveled considerable distances, as many as 45 miraculous feet. Unfortunately, on his record-breaking flight, he knocked over a lamp and was consumed by flames. His two boys, Percival and Charles, have promised to continue their dear pa's legacy of sky flight. A whole heap of men are fashioning contraptions to take us to the heavens. A flying machine powered by a trusty donkey. Once you arrive at your destination, you can mount the saddle and ride away. With this incredible contraption, one can enjoy some popcorn and have the best view in the house at the next flogging or lynching. Stagecoach robberies will soon be a relic of the past when we enlist our animal friends as couriers well out of range of man's shooting irons. But the most remarkable thing I have to reveal to you comes from a northern man called Moss John Nichols. Imagine travel without ever getting into a saddle. No doubt you have heard accounts or seen in person the majesty of flight achieved by performers in the circus. Mr. Nichols has perfected the Sky Cannon. Passengers simply walk up the steps, relax into the barrel, and are transported with great flourish to to the destination of their choice. The lame and infirmed who have been ravaged by scarlet fever or polio can once again call upon their loved ones. These newlyweds are all grown up, turned 17, said their wedding vows, and are off to visit New York City. And some very forward thinkers have told me that within 10 years, dear audience, any of us can take a holiday trip to the moon. I must disclose I'm quite partial to this mode of transport. Ships and horses are like to sour my stomach. The future is in the skies, my friends. Look to the heavens. We are going to join him up there by and by. Come again, even better the second time.
welcome. Thanks, partner. Girl? There, girl. 